Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the DAX switch function. Uh, this is in Power Pivot, and this is on Excel 2016. Now the switch function, you can just think of it as a more advanced version of an if statement. And I'll cover using the if statement and compare it using the switch function and also using the true function within a switch function. And it'll give you some more flexibility in the switch function. So let's see how we can use this. I'm here in sheet two. I've got this table of car makes, the year and the color. I'm going to bring it into the data model. So under power pivot, click add to data model. Excel is going to create a table before adding to the data model. I will say my table does have headers. Click OK. It's going to pull it in to power pivot. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let me pull this in to fit it. Now you can see it's brought it into the power pivot window. And I just need to expand this out a little bit. Let's bring it, let's bring it out a little bit more and then bring it down. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's a little bit finicky here on my PC. Let's bring this down. Okay. The way I'm going to use the switch function in here is as a calculated column. So you see that we have a power pivot window open and we're going to add a column here. And in this first example, I just wanted to compare the switch function to the if, if functions. So there are if functions in Power Pivot. Just like any other Excel function or formula, we're going to begin it with equal. And there is an if function in Power Pivot. You can see it shows up here. I just press tab to start it. Click on the make column. You can see it puts in the table name. This is the logical test. It puts in the table name and then the column within the square brackets. And if that equals Hyundai, that would be the this is going to be the first logical test. If that equals Hyundai, and that has to be in double quotes, then the result is going to be Korean. So it's going to bring back the word Korean. I'm just going to copy this if statement to do the other ones. Control C to copy, comma, Control V to paste. Now I mentioned there's other three makes here, Hyundai, Daewoo and Kia. So this is going to be Daewoo, D-A-E-W-O-O. -O. That's going to be Korean, comma, and then my third if statement, control V to paste that in. If this is Kia, then it's Korean. And then my catch-all, if it's false, if any of these are false, it's going to be other. And then close parentheses. I have to close parentheses three times because I have three open parentheses. One, two, three. Press enter and we're going to have our calculated column. Give this one a name. Let's call this uh, Korean car? Question mark. Korean car, Korean or other. And we'll just put this if there so I know this is the if statement. After that's done, I'm going to press tab. Go under pivot table and let's see what happens when I bring it in. Let's bring it into this existing worksheet. We'll put it in G5. Whoops, let me change this. Let's say G5. Click OK. Click OK. And now we can see our table shows up here. I'll put in Korean or other. That's in the rows. And I'll just put the make and the values. So just have it counted. So there's 36 of these records that are Korean and the other is 964. Now that was with the if statement. So let's try it with the switch statement or the switch function. Go to power pivot. I'm going to manage the data model and I'll put something here in this add column. So this will be the other one. Incidentally, instead of like doing all that, all that formula writing and putting the title here for that field, I can actually do it here. What I need to do is just type in, I'll say Korean or or other and this will be the switch function and I have to end it with a colon and then equal sign so that indicates that that is going to be the title of that header so with the switch function all you need to do is type switch and it looks like it figured out the switch function just press tab open up and the expression is going to be the same thing that one which is my table make what we can do here now is just say, well, if the first value, put in quotes, if that's Hyundai, 
what is my result? Well, that's going to say that's going to be Korean. My second value, my re second value, is going to be Daewoo. And what's my result? Well, it's going to be Korean. My third value is Kia. You can see the third value here. And then the result is Korean. And then else, you see that my uh, my else here. Anything else? I'm just going to say other. And all I need to do is close it with one parenthesis because I opened it with one parenthesis. Press enter. And now you've noticed that it's going to fill it out. It put in the header field here. It also put in the values for the other rows. Go to my pivot table and let's make another one. Let's put it in the existing worksheet. We'll put it here in K. Let's put it in K5. Click OK. Click OK. And now for this one, we're going to have Korean switch here and make over here. And it's the same value. So you can see that the switch function is a little bit cleaner than the bunch of if statements. Let me go back to manage. Look at that. You just write the switch function with our arguments here and compare that with the if statements. You have to have these nested ifs. It just makes it a little bit cleaner to look at. So another feature of the switch function or something that you can add to the switch function is logical expressions. And that's why I had the, the, tr the example of the true function earlier. I, pres I showed you the true function here, right? So we had the true function and you can actually wrap this true function within the switch function to perform logical expressions. Like something is greater than or equal to, to something, something is less than or equal to something. So the way we can write that is by saying equal switch, oops, switch, and the expression I'm going to put just true and close parentheses with that true. So what this is saying is we're going to evaluate that true expression and if that thing is true based on my value here then bring back that result. So my first value what I can say is let's say year if that is less than 1980 then what my, would my result be? Maybe I'll say oh this is a classic and then comma my next value let's say the year was greater than or equal to oops greater than or equal to 1980 and and I can use and I can use two ampersands to indicate and the year was less than 2000 what would my what would my result be maybe we can say that was y2k time period and then my last one, I can say my value. Let's say that one, table year is greater than or equal to 2000. And we'll just call this one new century. And anything else will be other. Basically, it probably won't indicate other because we probably uh, covered all our bases with these particular three close parentheses, press enter, and we have our calculated column here. Let's rename this. I'll just call it time period. Whoops. Thinks I want to move it. Let me click outside here or click on another one and click back here. Double click. Okay. I'll just call this time period. Press enter and then go to my pivot table. And let's put another one in here. I'll just put this one below here in cell G15. Let's put it in cell G15. Click OK. Click OK. And now we've got our third one here. And we have our time period. So I'll just put time period here and put the make here to have just count that. So you can see it's done that logical expression. It's basically looked at the years and looked at if it's greater than or equal to 1980 in between 1980 and 2000 or greater than 2000 and brought back some labels for that. So you can see it's a nice feature in Power Pivot if you didn't want to use the if statements and even if uh, you didn't want to use the switch function because this switch function is also available in Excel. The one thing that will give you some flexibility with the switch function is using this true function to do some logical expressions. So that's how we can use the switch function in Power Pivot. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.